live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. Breaking news, a massive sell-off on Wall Street. The stock market in a sea of red after a key indicator shows the U.S. economy may be marching toward a recession. Sean. Now at 5 o'clock, a man is shot. His car is taken here on the east side. Tonight we have the latest on police catching up with that car. All right, Sean, but we begin with a child attacked by four dogs. But the big question is what animal control didn't do right after this happened? Thanks for being with us for the news at five. It took some quick thinking by a grandmother to protect her granddaughter from further harm. The attack happened this afternoon on Detroit's east side on East Outer Drive near Dickerson. And as our Rod Maloney shows us, more frustrating is the fact the dogs remain with the owner tonight. A lot of Detroiters live in fear of pit bulls, and there's good reason for that. Joy Powers, who lives right over here, came home from running errands with her granddaughter, got out of the car and saw five baby pit bulls chasing another woman down the street, into the street, and biting her. But Joy's granddaughter got out, saw all of this, and started running toward the dogs, and then they went and attacked her. So before I could get down there to get to her and the dogs, they had already tackled her. So once they tackled her, I, all I had in my hand was my keys, so I started beating them off one by one with my keys. But it was five of them all on her at the same time. Some dogs down her. there bit me. This is 40-year-old Honesty Costner, the granddaughter. She's wearing gauze bandages over the bites and scratches she received on her arms and legs. She also received many other cuts and scratches on her side, back, and shoulder as well. She's screaming and rolling around, and I'm beating them with my keys. One of them was holding on to her leg and would not let go. So when I beat him off with my keys, he grabbed my leg. And then I beat him off again, and they all went running down the street. Joy went and took pictures of the dogs at their home just down the street after things calmed down a bit. Detroit police got the call to the scene. They in turn called Detroit Animal Control, but animal control officers would not take the puppies and instead drove away after leaving them with the owner with instructions to bring the animals to animal control in the next 24 hours. It is crazy. As you can see, Joy is not at all pleased with that response. Now she all bit up and the dogs are still down there to get out again. So this obviously could have been a whole lot worse, but what we did was get a statement from Detroit Animal Control today about what specifically happened. And what they're saying is that it's highly unlikely that three month old puppies could transfer rabies, but they do want to make sure that those dogs get a full evaluation. And they told the owner, as we said in the story, they need to bring those dogs to a veterinarian right away. Back to you. Uh, the question, I guess, Rod, what if they don't do that? What if it doesn't happen? Well, uh, interesting you asked, Jason. Uh, the way the uh, uh, animal control people tell us is that they're going to go back and check tomorrow. And if those dogs haven't been looked at by a veterinarian, then they will be confiscated. All right. We'll be following that. All right, Rod, thanks. Okay, now to breaking news on Wall Street as the Dow Jones Industrial Average closes down more than 800 points. The Dow, S&P 500, and NASDAQ all dropping after key, a key indicator in the market raised fears of a possible recession. So here's what happened today. Just after the opening bell, the bond market went through what's called an inverted yield curve for a short time. So that's something that's been seen prior to every major recession in recent history. Coming up at 6 o'clock, a nuts and bolts explanation on why an inverted yield curve is so troubling and what all of us average investors can do to minimize the impact this could have on our money. Police bust a man at Motor City Casino after they say he robbed two banks, one in Warren and one in Oak Park. Officers tell us this surveillance video captures Dorian Sykes during one of the heists. Tonight he's facing federal charges. Coco McAvoy joins us live after talking with investigators. Coco. Yes, and police were able to track down the suspect because he left behind a key piece of evidence here at the Citizens Bank in Warren. Uh, within 30 hours after two bank robberies, a career criminal was uh, arrested. The Citizens Bank on Van Dyke and Warren became the target of a robbery, one that employees never saw coming. Surveillance video shows it all. Police say Dorian Sykes casually walked into the bank and asked about opening an account. He sat down in a chair waiting. Then once an employee walked over to Sykes, he allegedly handed the employee a note and said he was robbing the place. 
We really got lucky in this particular case, very lucky. Right. Commissioner Bill Dwyer says the clerk gave Sykes a few hundred dollars and he took off, but not before leaving his fingerprints behind. Then, just a few hours later. At 3.15 p.m., he went to Oak Park and robbed the bank in Oak Park. The Oak Park robbery was very similar to the one in Warren, and the suspect's description matched Sykes. Police tracked him down and arrested him. So yesterday afternoon around 2.30 p.m., he was placed under arrest at the gambling table at the Motor City Casino. And police say Sykes has a criminal history and has already served nearly 15 years in federal prison. Reporting live this afternoon, I'm Coco McAvoy. Back to you. Okay, Coco. Jason. A set of bizarre circumstances tonight surrounding a critical shooting and car theft outside of a motel on Detroit's east side. Let's get to Sean Lay live tonight. And Sean, police initially thought this was uh, carjacking, but that's changed now. Here's what we're piecing together from witnesses out here that the man was shot right down the street. He ran from his gold Buick to get some help here at the Cabana Motel on Harper. And that's when those two guys jumped in his car back down this way and took off with it. 14, a 23 year old man is in critical condition tonight after being shot near the Cabana Motel on Detroit's east side. Now he was driving a gold Buick with a woman with him when a gunman approached, opened fire, and two people then driving off in the victim's car. We have in route south on scene, runs confirmed. This shooting and car theft coming in the wake of an off duty carjacking of a police officer from Harper Woods this week and the manhunt to track down the suspects. Chief Greg saying carjackings in the city of Detroit are down 28% as compared to last year and down 60% since 2015. The difference? Now that we have so many 575 green lights across this city, so now they're looking for places that are not green lights. This morning shooting and car theft did not happen near a green light business. A woman was unaccounted for after the shooting, but tonight police have located her, questioned her, and released her. Again, the victim is in critical condition. His uh, gold Buick, the two guys took off in it. Police spotted it later on in the morning, stopped that car. Tonight, they have two men in custody. Live on the east side, Sean Lake, Local 4. All right, Sean, thanks. Okay, well, let's uh, take a look outside on this crystal clear day across Metro Detroit. Boy, what do they say on days like this? Um, when the sun's out, uh, guns out. Yeah, that's right. Let's get on over to bed. <laughs> <And> I, <no. laughs> huh? That's what it is. Not Come on. what I was expecting in the tostil weather, but we'll <laughs> we'll go with it. Uh, there is a very small caveat to those beautiful skies, and it's for live radar. There are some rogue showers hanging around at least parts of the metro and north zone right now. This is getting to that territory where we saw the big soakers on Monday, but this is a couple hundredths of an inch at best. It's not going to amount to much. Southern half of the area not seeing anything, but there are some serious storms out here to the southwest. There's a severe thunderstorm warning on that one just south of Kalamazoo, but they've got a lot more humidity in that corner of the state. It's also closer to the surface low. Uh, air is very dry. In fact, those dew points 15 degrees lower over here. So if we see anything, I think it'll be a shower and maybe a rumble of thunder, but the vast majority of us are going to stay dry and comfortable with that dry humidity. We'll look at when things change. It won't be too long. All coming up in the seven day forecast, guys. All right, Ben. Constituents, supporters, and friends pay their respects today to the late Oakland County Executive L. Brooks Patterson. A visitation is being held at the Woodside Bible Church on Rochester Road in Troy until 8 tonight. His funeral is scheduled for tomorrow at 1.30 at the same location. Patterson will then be buried in a private ceremony. He passed away earlier this month after a battle with pancreatic cancer. Meanwhile, the county now has the tough task of selecting the person who will replace L. Brooks Patterson. Today, the Oakland County Board of Commissioners interviewed five candidates looking to become county executive. The Board of Commissioners could make their appointment at their next meeting, which is this Friday. Governor Gretchen Whitmer weighs in on the state civil rights director who's under fire for sexist comments, saying he should resign or be fired. Augustin Arbulu was reported by a co-worker in May for making sexist comments about women. Governor Whitmer has told her administration not to talk to him unless they legally have to. She says she'll keep him out of her cabinet meetings as well. Arbulu was recently reprimanded and has apologized for those comments. Well, they're scary and illegal and showing up right here in Detroit. 
but we definitely do not want those devices out on the streets. New tonight, the defenders expose the specialized kits being used to turn regular guns into automatic weapons. Nick. A thief busts into the Dave and Buster's here in Utica, smashing open this ATM, and it's all caught on camera. Take a look. But guess what else he took? What makes this crime even more disturbing? It's been 10 years since the 11,000 untested rape kits were found in Detroit. Next, a look at where we are now in chasing down those rapists.